Welcome back to the Roger Hedgecock Show here at the Aramco Group Studios at uh, UTTV. Glad you're there. Now, you know the history uh, of the lawyers going after big tobacco. And there have been a lot of settlements and multi-million, multi-trillion, I don't know, all these states have been involved, all the private lawyers. And uh, you know the same thing has happened with asbestos and other kinds of products where the trial lawyers go after uh, products that have been harmful to the, um, the public in some way and try to get some compensation. Now, the trial lawyers appear to be turning their big guns now on food. For example, looking at uh, the claims made in this Nutella commercial. Take a look at this. Breakfast in this house? In the morning, I can use all the help I can get. That's why I love Nutella, a delicious hazelnut spread that's perfect on multigrain toast and even whole wheat waffles. It's a quick and easy way to give my family a breakfast they'll want to eat. And Nutella is made with simple quality ingredients like hazelnuts, skim milk, and a hint of cocoa. They love the taste, and I feel good that they're ready to tackle the day. Nutella, breakfast never tasted this good. Well, uh, sounds, sounds good to me, but apparently not uh, to Greg Weston, and he had something to say. Maybe we have a tape of this as well before we introduce him live. And Nutella, again, uh, was very focused on uh, having store placement right next to the peanut butter, not next to icing, which it's more similar to. And, you know, it, it's easy to say for, for me to read a label, but uh, one of our, our mom plaintiffs had seven kids. And, you know, to expect her to read the label of everything she buys in the grocery store, people don't have time for that. And, and that's a decision that our legislature and the FDA have made that consumers are entitled to have completely truthful advertising and completely truthful labels when it comes to... Uh, health and, and food. He's a Harvard graduate uh, in 2004. He's in a law firm here in San Diego, Gregory Weston, and he was just pictured there talking about this lawsuit. You sued Nutella. Yes, we did. We sued Ferrero, the maker of Nutella, and they, they settled and they've agreed to end the TV commercial that you just uh, aired, and they've revised it. What was the objection you had to the, on behalf of the moms that you were representing, to, that you had to this, uh, to this ad? It was that this is a breakfast food that you should be eating every day, and it was really that they're, they're constantly comparing the product to peanut butter when it wasn't comparable to peanut butter. Peanut butter is, is almost entirely peanuts. Uh, Nutella. I, did, I missed the peanut butter part. Was that in the ad? It, it wasn't in the ad, but uh, what they do is on the label, they, they call it a hazelnut spread, comparing it a little bit to a peanut spread, and they also put it on the store uh, in the shelf right next to the peanut butter. But in the ad, they did say, I mean, if I was watching that ad, I'd say, okay, it's got a lot of sugar in it because it's got the cocoa. And it's got these nuts, and obviously they're spreading it on there and, uh, and hoping that you'll feel good about it because it's on the wheat bread or whatever. But it, it didn't sound that outlandishly... I mean, I remember back in the 50s when they were saying that cigarettes were good for you. <laughs> I mean, that, that's yeah. an outlandish health claim, okay? But this didn't sound that outlandish. I, I agree that, that what uh, Nutella was being advertised was, was probably a, one, one of the, the lesser evils here. There are a lot worse companies out there and doing a lot worse things when it comes to false advertising on food. Um, and to give you an example, a lot of companies right now are using trans fat, which is very comparable to asbestos. They both kill about 50,000 Americans a year. And they are taking this product uh, and putting trans fat and all sorts of products intended for children, in including uh, Teddy Grahams, uh, other sorts of graham crackers, on Crustables, which are a frozen PB&J sandwich that's made by the Smucker Company, and, uh, and all sorts of margarines, too, that go into macaroni and cheese and other products parents make for children. Now, trans fats, we can have a big debate whether they're good or bad for you, and I know a lot of people say they're bad for you, and that's fine. But they're a legal product, right? Uh, they're increasingly becoming illegal. There's a lot of uh, places where they're not allowed in restaurants. You're not allowed to use uh, trans fat in, in restaurants in California anymore. You're not allowed to use them in uh, a public school cafeterias anymore. You're still allowed to sell them in the grocery stores, apparently, uh, but I don't even know how long that's going to last because it, it really is, is extraordinarily bad for you. Plus, well, we have I, substitutes. I guess, I guess what I'm arguing, I guess what yes. I'm arguing is that if uh, it's a legal product and I'm selling it in the supermarket, and it's labeled on there because they require me to identify it. Uh, why should I have to pay you money or pay your plaintiffs money? Well, you, you should have to pay people uh, money when uh, the label is not accurate. And you're, you're right, it is a legal product. And wh what happens is, uh, is they put health claims on top of the trans fat. They have this, this deadly ingredient that causes cancer and heart disease. And yet they say words like wholesome, supports kids' health and development, uh, nutritionists recommend it. And these are all things that are just completely false. So we're really looking at the key phrases on 
the uh, label, especially the front of the box, where, which, where they're eye-catching. And if those aren't true, then we're suing them and we're demanding that they give consumers refunds going back years and years and years. There was a lawsuit against Captain Crunch uh, Crunch Berries. Uh, because there was no berries. Somebody, somebody said, well, there's no berries. Well, of course there's not berries. A crunch berry is not a berry. A crunch berry is a little crunchy, sugary thing. Um, I, I just don't I get that. If, if, if I'm selling gummy bears, I, I assume people know that there's not real bears. I agree with you that the, the Captain Crunch Crunch Berries was a silly <laughs> lawsuit. And you know what? That lawsuit got thrown out uh, uh, almost immediately. And, and that was the now, end of it. On the advertising part yeah. of it, though, that you point out, that people make these claims in, in, in selling these products. That's all regulated by the Federal Trade Commission. And if I'm within their boundaries, I mean, isn't there some regulation that if I'm in within their boundaries, how can you come along and say, well, you have a different opinion than the FTC? They, they, they usually aren't, though. The, uh, the FDA has very limited resources and, and can barely only start to uh, go against the companies that violate it. And if I can just show you another yeah. example right here, this, this is uh, Honey Made. This is a product made by Kraft. And uh, it, you would think that this product has a lot of honey, considering it says honey on it. And there's a bee here, and there's some honey dripping in it. Actually, this is sweetened with high fructose corn syrup, not with honey. And it's not even a real gram. It, it says gram on here, but gram is a very particular type of flour um, that has been made in America for about 120 years and invented by a Dr. Graham. And that's not the type of flour they use there. They used a really bad refined flour in it. So uh, everything in the, this label basically is false. And in addition to that, in addition to, to not having honey, in addition to not being made with gram flour, they put trans fat in it. And there's no reason for do, to doing this other than to make the company more money. They could spend another 10 cents, 15 cents a box and use something, a natural fat rather than artificial trans fat, and they've just chosen not to. They want to make that extra 15 cents in profit. And at a certain point, it takes a lawsuit to do it. The FDA simply does not have the resources. And in California, fortunately, we're empowered as, as private citizens to challenge companies that are violating the law in this manner well, with a class but, action but, lawsuit. And, and, and right, right, rightfully so. I don't want to have something a honey made that doesn't have honey in it. But then the profits go to you because you represent a class. You go up against Nabisco. Nabisco is going to settle for whatever they settle for, and you're going to get a big chunk of that money. I, I, I hope I do. I, I, I think if I uh, get uh, 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 $5 million for people who have been defrauded, that I get the normal contingency just like any other contingency fee lawyer uh, would, and I, I have to win the case first. Absolutely. Now, what the problem is that average consumer is caught between, okay, big business trying to make a profit, lawyers trying to make a profit, uh, you've got these plaintiffs, you've got everybody fighting, the consumer product price is going to go up to pay for it all, isn't it? No, I don't. I don't think so. Sure, it is. Where's the money going to come well, from? You know what? The, if, if we can drive uh, products like this, a uh, honey made that isn't made with honey and is, doesn't have gram, even though it's called a graham cracker, out of business, I think that would be great. I, I think th they should Nabisco's be. Nabisco's just going to tack two cents on every other product they make that you haven't sued. They make 150 products. I, I, I think uh, what, what they will do, if, if hopefully if we're successful enough and we keep winning jury trials, is what they're going to have to do is make their products legally. Uh, I, I just don't agree that they're, they're going to have to raise their price if the, they have to compete with companies that are honest in their labeling. And you can't raise your price higher than, than your competitors. You, you and yeah. other lawyers like you across the country, there's lots of lawyers involved in these things. I was talking about one guy in Mississippi. Um, th are going to go after all these companies. I mean, you're saying Nabisco has made, you know, false claims here. What company has not made claims about their product? Well, I think there's a lot of companies that are, and are truthful in their And how did you find out that they had fructose here if it wasn't listed? It, it's listed in very tiny print, but well, I mean... Well, I can read yeah. it, and with my bad eyes I can read it. So, you know, it, doesn't, it, says, um, can, it says honey, by the way. Well, you're right. It, there is a tiny bit of honey in that, and that's okay. one of the, the things they do. Is you see at the very end of the ingredient list, there's a tiny bit of, it of says the honey. Grain flour too. But Old if you look, grain wheat flour. If you look above it, you'll see first a uh, 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 un, it unbleached, and rich bleached flour, and rich flour. Wheat. Okay. That's a name for basically super refined flour that is turns into sugar as soon as it hits your stomach, and then once it hits your stomach, it goes straight to your blood uh, bloodstream, causes you a blood okay, sugar you strike, told me causes thing. diabetes over time. You, you said it wasn't. It was a graham cracker without graham flour. It does have graham flour? Well, it's not pure graham flour. They use cheap flour pure, mostly, it was, it doesn't and say then they put a little flour. on there. <laughs> well, it's a graham cracker, but I expect a graham cracker to be made primarily with graham flour, if not entirely. This is primarily refined flour with a little bit of graham in it. We will continue to follow the issue. I appreciate you coming in, Greg Weston. Thanks very much for letting us know. Thank you very much for inviting Thanks. me. I'm Roger Hedgecock. We'll be back. 
talk a little bit about Marco Rubio after this.